Hi gang! User Fathony Rygan asked for help with one of these, sometimes called a spin whirl or electric whirl, or more accurately, an ion wind rotor. So I made one and found some interesting things along the way. How did I make it? Let's start with the parts. So here are the things I used. This is a piece of scrap balsa wood. It's just for support structures. Pretty much anything will do. Uh, one nail. And this aluminum I took from a soda can. It has to be fairly rigid but also fairly lightweight. So this is perfect. And then any tape will do. First cut a piece of the balsa wood. And then push the nail through it. Didn't care to make it go through straight. It's also important that the head of the nail stick out from the bottom of the balsa wood so that electrical contact can be made with it. Next, draw some rough lines on the aluminum for cutting the rotor out of it. And then cut out the rotor. It doesn't have to be perfect, but trying to make both sides the same will make it sit flatter on the shaft. Find the center of the rotor and use a nail to punch a hole through it. Be careful not to rip the rotor to pieces during this step. Remove or flatten any edge pieces sticking out of the hole. Make the hole large enough so that it rotates freely, but not too large. You still want some electrical conduction with the shaft. Then wrap a strip of tape around the bottom of the shaft. This is for the rotor to sit on. Then put on the rotor, followed by another piece of tape. This tape is just to keep the rotor from flying away, so it doesn't have to be too near the first one. And finally, tape the whole thing to the top of the Van de Graaff generator. Notice that the head of the nail makes electrical contact with the surface of the dome. And now to try it out. If your rotor isn't evenly balanced, then it may not start on its own. One side of the rotor may hold on to the bottom tape. Gently tapping that side down will flatten it out, and it'll start spinning. I also got to work with my small homemade Van de Graaff generator, but it was a little tricky. First off, I had to sand the paint off where the nail would contact the can. I also had an issue with the rotor lining up perpendicular to the can. The can and the rotor were both positively charged. However, the area of the can that the rotor interacted with was uneven, and tended to hold the rotor in place during this part of its rotation. The solution was to increase the speed of the Van de Graaff's motor. That increased the amount of charge being pumped, and therefore the amount of charge at the sharp points. That resulted in a stronger ion wind at the sharp points. Strong enough to overcome the repulsion forces and make the rotor spin. This problem didn't occur with the big Van de Graaff generator because the shape of the dome, being even all around below the rotor, meant the repulsion forces were also even. Another possible solution would be to make the shaft taller to get the rotor further away from the can. But one hidden factor is that this repulsion also helps lift the rotor off the tape so that it can spin more freely. But if your rotor is attached through bearings or some other support mechanism, then this may not be as much of an issue. And just to show you that this repulsion between Van de Graaff and rotor does exist, here's what happens to a piece of lighter aluminum foil sitting on the shaft. How does it work? It's basically a freely turning, electrically conductive object, called a rotor, that has two sharp points. The points face in opposite directions. The rotor is connected to a metal shaft, which is in turn connected to a high voltage source, like this Van de Graaff generator. The dome of this Van de Graaff generator is positively charged, and so the shaft and rotor are also positively charged. The charge at each sharp point is very densely packed, resulting in a particularly strong electric field emanating from the charge. That electric field strips electrons from nearby air molecules, turning them into positively charged ions. The negatively charged electrons are attracted to the rotor, but the positively charged ions are repelled away. Newton's third law says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So while the positive ions are repelled in one direction, the rotor moves in the opposite direction. And since both points are also facing in opposite directions, that causes the rotor to rotate around its center, the shaft. The ion wind is the jet of ions that are repelled away. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes one showing smoke tests for a lifter, the smoke making the ion wind visible to see, parts 1 and 2 of how to make the homemade Van de Graaff generator you saw here, and for variety, 1 on how to make a speaker using piezoelectric crystals. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. More, give a thumbs up, leave a question or comment below. See you soon!